statement is the cash flow statement. I like the cash flow statement the best because you actually know the answer before you start. The whole point of the cash flow statement is to figure out why you have the cash balance that you actually have on your balance sheet. So, got a balance sheet up for us, and what we're looking at is the cash account. The cash flow statement is all about cash. Up to this point, we've been focused more on the accrual, and we're still accrual accounting basis. But this statement particularly is one that specifically tracks cash. I want to figure out where my cash came from and where it went and how I got the balance that I have. I can see that right now I have a $4,015 balance in my cash account. Why? How? Where did it come from? That's what the cash flow statement is going to tell me. And it's going to give me more details um, that I can use as both, say, a manager, someone internal to the company, but also external investors because we're going to figure out not just where the cash come from, but what type of cash was it. We're going to have three sections on the cash flow statement. And I don't know, it might sound a little corny, but easy way to remember them in order is with a little acronym or mnemonic device kind of thing that I use. It's called, it's the cash flow statement. So if you say, oh, it flows, the cash flows, oh, it flows. O is your first section, the operating section. It, I, is the second section, the investing section, and flows, the F, is the financing section. Oh, it flows, operating, investing, and financing sections. The first section, the operating section, deals with the operations, and it focuses on taking net income and changing it into a cash basis. Okay, we're doing the indirect method. There are two ways to do a cash flow statement. You can do an indirect method or a direct method. The indirect method is the one that's used by about, oh, I'd say 98 to 99% of all companies use the indirect. So that's the one we focus on the most. If you want to see more about the direct method, um, you can look at it. There's some more information um, that you can find on the direct, but we're going to focus on the indirect. So for the indirect, you start with net income in the operating section, and I have to find a way to convert that into cash because it's not a cash figure. If I said I had net income of $10,000, that doesn't mean that I have cash or made cash of $10,000 during the year because that's an accrual figure, not a cash figure. So we have to figure out how to do to take that number and, and turn it into a cash basis. So that's what the operating section is about. The investing section deals with long-lived assets and long-lived liabilities. So you're talking about um, purchasing fixed assets, property, plant, equipment, or um, dealing with long-term debt those types of items would be found in the investing section or purchase of investments even, things like that. Um, again, long-term, we're talking about long-term assets. So the last section is the financing section, and this deals with debt and equity financing. So issuance of stock or bonds would be items that you'd find in the financing section. Dividends also would be there. So anything that deals with payment or receipt of cash, that's what we want to look at. Because we're doing the indirect method, and the easiest way to kind of start this is to get a comparative balance sheet. Or if you don't have a comparative, we want to get both of the balance sheets out. We also want to get our other financial statements. We're going to look at the retained earnings statement, we're going to look at the income statement, and sometimes we may actually need to look at individual accounts to figure out what went on in them. We want to analyze all of our data to know what we're dealing with and what items we need to put on the cash flow statement. Because remember, the whole point of it is to find out where we got cash and where cash went. Now with the indirect method, again, the way we kind of start off is, is not directly looking at, oh, I got this cash payment. We want to take net income and figure out how we can change it to make it a cash basis. So to start off with, though, before we get into the specific sections, we just want to look at this year's balance sheet and last year's balance sheet and compare the two. So to start with, I've got a comparative balance sheet, so it has both years on it. The current year is the first column and the previous year is the second column. I'm going to create a new column to show whether that increased or decreased between the two years. So I'm just going to put increase, decrease in here. Okay, so. I'll just put a little formula, make it quicker. So for instance, cash increased from last year to this year by $2,983. And guess what? 
that is the answer we're looking for on our cash flow statement. So I actually know the answer before I start. Before I even start out, start making up my cash flow statement, I know that when I get done, it should say 2983. Because this that's the whole point of the cash flow statement, is to figure out why cash increased by 2983. So let me just pull this down a bit. Take out lines that don't matter. So now I've just got the change amounts for each account between the two years. All right. Now, some of these I might need to analyze. You'll find in the operating section, again, we're dealing with things that are talking about net income and specifically also current assets and current liabilities. So for the current assets and current liabilities, I really only need to know the change in them. Now, be careful though. Will this change be included as part of that aspect? No, that, that's the end result. So we're not going to include that in the operating section because that's the answer at, that we're seeking. So that one you're not going to put in there. That'll throw your numbers off. But the rest of the current assets here, like accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, those are going to be included in your operating section. And I just need to know the change in the accounts. Same thing with current liabilities. Accounts payable, salaries and wages payable, and interest payable. Those items are going to be in the operating section, and I just need to know the change in the accounts. Now, long-lived assets, long-lived liabilities, and your equities, I need to know some more details about those. Okay, For instance, building didn't change. Now, could be that nothing happened in the building account, but to make sure I want to go in there, what if for some reason we bought and sold the same amount of building? Well, I'd need to know that. It would still be a, a washout effect, but I'd still be, if I you know, purchased some for cash and sold some for cash, I'd need to make reference to that on the cash flow statement. So I need some more details. Again, either you need to be given these details or you need to physically go and look at these specific accounts to analyze them and see what happened in them. Another one, for instance, okay, equipment. Well, overall, we increased equipment by $2,000. Does that mean that we bought $2,000 worth of equipment? Maybe. I don't know. Okay, so let's look and see if we've got some other details. Again, those we need to analyze, we need to look at long-term liabilities, and we need to look at the equity accounts and analyze those, again, to pull out anything that deals with cash. So here's a little additional information for us. The first one, we did purchase some equipment, but there were no sales or disposals on fixed assets. Okay, so that tells me that the building, for instance, it just didn't change for the two years, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, but the equipment, we purchased some. Right. Does that mean that we purchased $2,000? Maybe. Let's let's hold on to that for just a second. Notes payable. Right, if we look up here, we see notes payable decreased by $1,200. And it says that the notes payable change is due to repayment of principal. So that just means we repaid some of the principal. It doesn't mean we got additional loans of, say, you know, uh, $10,000, but we repaid enough to make a difference of, you know, the $1,200. No. But you'd still need to analyze because you could have multiple items happening in an account, and the overall difference would be, say, the 1200 but you'd have several things in there that you'd need to account for. So you've got to look at analyzing the accounts. And the last additional information we have deals with common stock. It says common stock was issued for cash. Okay, So we know that common the stock account itself went up 500 and paid in capital in excess of par went up 300 So overall, it looks like we issued $800 additional dollars worth. Um, of stock. And if we issued that for cash, then I definitely want to put that on the cash flow statement. Something that we, we wouldn't record um, as far as changing that amount for cash on there would be, what if we issued the stock in exchange for the equipment? Maybe that equipment we purchased, we didn't pay cash for, we just traded out stock for equipment. Well, then that would be something we'd actually make note of on the cash flow statement. But it would be all the way at the bottom after we've figured out our numbers and that answer for cash in a section that we call non-cash investing and financing activities. And it just shows you major non-cash items that changed some of your accounts. That's not happening here, but it would be referenced at the bottom if something like that had happened. So we know why some things changed, but they weren't reflected in the cash flow statement. And then we also have the retained earnings balance that we need to look at. What kind of items go through retained earnings? Now, you can have some odd items, like if you changed an accounting, um, like say you went from LIFO to FIFO and you had to do a retroactive restatement. We haven't really talked a lot about those things. Those are some upper-level accounting issues. But sometimes you can have change in accounting principles that will impact your retained earnings or errors that will go through retained earnings or 
let's say that you sold treasury stock and you didn't have enough in that paid in capital from treasury stock account and you had to take it through retained earnings. But we're going to assume for this problem, none of those special things have happened. Just the regular items. And remember, what regularly goes through retained earnings? Three kinds of accounts. Revenues, expenses, and dividends. Revenues and expenses, we get net income or net loss, and it, it flows through retained earnings. And then dividends flow through. So we can look on the retain, in the retained earnings account or on the retained earnings statement and see what happened in that account. So let's go back up to equipment and kind of analyze these accounts based on what we've been told. So we got building net and equipment net. So if we purchased equipment and... We've got an increase of $2,000. Did we just purchase $2,000? Well, let's look at one other financial statement to help out on some of this analysis. Let's look at the income statement for the company. Because when we get to that operating section, it deals with changing net income into a cash figure. Are there any items on this income statement that have absolutely nothing to do with cash? Now, some of them may have to do with accruals, but is there anything in particular that never has anything to do with cash? doesn't matter if it was an accrual or not. And I see one glaring item. Depreciation expense never has anything to do with cash. We've de deducted your net income figure for this depreciation expense, but does it have anything to do with cash? No. So we're going to be adding that back. If you see depreciation expense or amortization expense um, for, say, a patent or an intangible or for something like a bond um, premium or discount, those items are going to be added back because they have nothing to do with cash. Also, if you had gains or losses on your income statement, we need to pick those up. Those are going to be uh, taken into account. A gain added to your net income, but it really didn't have anything to do with cash, so we'd have to subtract that back out. Losses deduct from it, but it really doesn't have anything to do with cash, so we would add it back. Okay, But depreciation right now has another impact for me in reference to the fixed assets because right now we show an increase in 2000 in that equipment. We know we purchased some but we also know there was eight thousand dollars worth of depreciation and and we didn't put it down there but I'm gonna assume um, uh, also additionally the building is fully depreciated so it doesn't pertain to the building so it must mean that that equipment account also had accumulated depreci I mean, depreciation expense taken out of it. So if we started with, fi with 5300 and we subtracted 8000 we wouldn't be at 7300 And also, that wouldn't mean that we just bought $2,000 worth of a building. To get to the 7300 it means we must have bought $10,000 worth in the building. Of the accounts. Because... At first, you might have just said, oh, yeah, we increased it 2,000. No. Nope. We actually decreased to 8, and then we increased it 10. That overall gives me that change in the increase in 2,000. So that's, again, important. All right, we've analyzed the stock. We know that it was for cash. It increased a total of $800, and we add in the paid in capital. And now the retained earnings. Let's go look at that retained earnings statement that we had. Okay, we started out with $15,000. We had net income and we had dividends. We're assuming those are cash dividends. So there's the reason that we have the overall change in retained earnings of an increase in 6900 The net income part of this, like we've already said, is going to be taken care of in the operating section. But the dividends we need to take care of in the financing section, the side that deals with the equity um, and transactions. Okay. So now we've kind of, I know that was slightly fast, but now we've analyzed our accounts. Okay, so this is the part one, the analysis. Go back if you didn't understand some of that, re, you kind of look through it, and then come back and we're going to actually make up our cash flows statement.